Hi, uh, welcome to Everything Embedded. In this video, I want to talk about how to use Qt for developing iOS application. Uh, specifically, I'm going to show you how you can use Qt uh, to write uh, application for iPad Pro. That's what I'm using in this video. So by the end of this video, you should get a fairly uh, good idea what is the process involved and uh, what are the efforts, basically what are the technical efforts and what are the steps which you need to go through in Xcode as well as in for in the Qt to get a Qt or uh, also on the iPad, on the iOS device itself, what are the steps necessary so that you can have an app uh, running on the iOS device. Why are we using Qt? Well, uh, we have already used Qt for uh, writing applications for the Raspberry Pi for our embedded Linux projects. Uh, make sure to watch those videos if you have not uh, already seen those videos where I am using Q uh, Qt for most of my uh, most of my UI work, whether it's for the Raspberry Pi or whether even it's for for Ubuntu Linux as well. So I thought maybe why can't we just use Qt to develop applications for for iPad really? We already have the skills, so we can use the same skills to use. We can put them to use for for iOS as well. So first thing is uh, get the Qt visit installation visit from the website. I'll put the link in the description and make sure you have the support for iOS installed as you see on the screen now. So just make sure you tick the box which says iOS. That will make sure that you install the iOS uh, Qt iOS libraries and the rest should be just default as it is really and just let the installation go through it will should take about uh, 30 minutes or so and uh, once it is finished so come back to this uh, video so right so at this stage you already have the qt libraries installed and everything so first we'll start xcode uh, because that is a very important step to go through before you can use Qt. So just launch Xcode and we'll create a sample uh, project, a sample iOS project. So let's create a new project here. You can see my iPad's uh, screen output on the right hand side of your screen now. So I'll create a iOS app. I'll just give any name really. Uh, say, I'll say test and but make sure you put something in the organization identifier which needs to be unique. So uh, well, uh, just to make sure, why are we using Qt? We don't want to learn Apple's uh, Swift language, really. Uh, and since we already know Qt C++, can we use that very easily? Yeah, we can. So, but uh, just to get things right, we have to go through this step. So, create a sample project in Swift, as you see on the screen. And it is just a simple Hello World app. Uh, the output from my iPad is shown on the right-hand side, as I mentioned before. The important thing is to go into the project settings, signing and capabilities part. So I'll just go to that tab. And as you can see, you need to select the proper team from there. So that is a very important step. You need to select the right option from that part. And once you have done that, then it should not be a problem uh, for Xcode to deploy your application onto your iOS device. So I have selected the team from the signing in capabilities. I have made sure that I have my identifier correct, a unique identifier, which needs to be provided. And if you go to the Windows menu, uh, there is an option called as devices and simulators. Make sure your iOS device is listed there and authorize it if necessary. Now you have to do some changes on the iPad itself. So if you go into the settings of your iPad, so I'm in the settings and general we'll make some changes in the ipad so that it allows uh, untrusted apps from uh, because you are an untrusted developer at this stage so which you have to go to is vpn and device management setting this is the option which we'll be using to allow our untrusted application to be uh, launched by ipad uh, it's a security requirement of the ipad itself Okay, so I'll go back to Xcode and I will start deploying the application from there. So I'm building it now. Okay, so as you can see, 
uh, option appears on the iPad now, which says this is uh, not a trusted uh, account. Uh, so as expected, uh, it will not be able to launch that application because your account is untrusted at the moment. This application is unknown to your iPad and it could be a security risk. So we need to tell iPad, please allow this. So I'll say trust this account. I'll click on the trust here. Yeah. I want to trust that. Okay, so once I've established the trust between my developer account and my Xcode and my iPad, now I will attempt to run the program again from Xcode. Okay, I think I can already see the icon on the iPad. And there is the simple hello world application from Xcode running on my iPad, the actual iPad. This is not a simulator, by the way. This is an actual iPad. Now, I think that should be very simple. So what we plan to do now is we need to do the same thing. But instead of using Xcode, because uh, as I said, uh, we don't want to be messing with Apple's uh, Swift uh, language and go on to those complications, at least in not in this video. As I again said, make sure that your device is listed in the Xcode devices uh, tab. And uh, once you have proven that you are, uh, you can uh, launch applications or build applications from Xcode onto your iOS device, then uh, doing that in Qt should not be a problem. So in the next stage, I will show you what we can do in Qt. Okay. So we are in the Qt creator now. I'll create a simple Qt quick application. I've launched the Qt creator wizard. I'm just going to give some name here. Say test, test one. I'll press continue. I'll continue. And I'll make sure to select the Qt for iOS. I'll tick that option and go ahead. That should go. So it's just a simple thing. And on the bottom right, you can see the output from my iPad. That's my iPad connected to my Mac. So I'll just see if it actually launches any applications or so. So this will prove that we are able to build and deploy or debug a simple application from the Qt creator onto the iPad device. In my case, it's an iPad Pro device. So let me just click on it. Does it do anything on the iPad? Uh, we will just find out now. And uh, I think it's doing something. It's building something at least. It's taking some time. And once we have it here, we should find out quick. Okay, I'll zoom in on my iPad now. And let's see if anything comes up on the screen now. So my, you, on the right hand side, you see the output of my iPad, okay, where we can see the application called test. And uh, yeah, so we can see there is an application which has been created. It's nothing fancy application. Uh, we need to do something, uh, something more creative here to, to uh, demonstrate uh, some potential of Qt. I want to keep this video short. So, but let me try some other application as well. Uh, what can we create? Should I create a new application or uh, mm, so okay, these are the files and uh, just to demonstrate something uh, different, I will, uh, I'll see what I can do. I'll maybe I'll select some kind of a ready-made example or something, which will show that we are indeed using QT's, uh, Okay, I'll close all these projects here. Okay, so I'm going to select a new Qt quick application. Uh, well, I have kept my iPad display on the right hand side because you have already seen what is involved on in the Qt side. I just want to show the output which gets produced in the iPad. Hence, uh, iPad area is occupying the screen. So again, but this time I'm going to select a sample application which comes along with Qt creator. It's called as a coffee maker. Uh, with some interesting graphics. So that should prove that uh, we can indeed. Uh, so that's the one coffee machine example. I'm going to select this uh, one 
and if this is uh, if this if everything is has been set up correctly we should see the coffee machine example uh, running on our ipad and this should be a good start for us to play with future future settings really so i will just click on the run button now let's do a run and see what happens so while it's doing the build as you can imagine now uh, we have a means where we can utilize our previous experiences with Qt, whether we have used it for embedded Linux or for Ubuntu, now the same thing can be used for uh, for iPad as well. Make sure to watch my previous videos where I have shown how to create a UI for your own embedded Linux image. Also, it was called as a coffee place, and uh, so well, what a coincidence! So I'm using a Qt example called Coffee Machine, and here is a coffee machine on the iPad Pro as well. Yeah, it does not look fancy because I have not customized it for my iPad Pro. It is running in the default, whatever the default UI settings were. So let's prepare a cappuccino and I'll tap on the continue button. So this is a Qt sample application. And what about an espresso? Sure, I prepare an espresso. Okay, let's do that. Let's go and prepare espresso. Let's change some milk or some... Uh, settings with some water as well and some coffee layout and let's see if it gives me an espresso back yeah that seems to be working fine as well all the graphics and everything is working i'll see should i prepare a latte okay let's do a latte as well so as you can see now things are working fine our environment has been set up correctly qt is running fine this was the purpose of this video to make sure that you have Xcode uh, set up correctly because that's the key thing here and once you have Xcode and all your developer accounts Apple developer account set up correctly and if you have installed Qt with iOS support you should be able to you should be good to go from here really so I'll see you shortly in the next video uh, I'll keep this video short thanks very much for watching cheers bye bye